Hello everybody, welcome back to Living in Green Bay. Today we have a super fun video planned for you. We are going to be talking about 12 things, 12, 12, 12, 12 things, 5, 5, 2, 12 things that you will miss when you move away from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Now, you might be wondering, okay, why are you sitting off center like a weirdo? Um, that's because I'm not actually going to answer the question fully today. I am going to have a friend come and tell you a little bit more from their experience as well. Because I moved away from Green Bay, but I moved back. So I think I don't feel the loss of these things as significantly. So if you wouldn't mind giving a warm living in Green Bay welcome to my friend, let's introduce Dylan Kazimi. Hello and welcome back to Living in Green Bay. My name is Andrew Guywitz. I'm your local real estate agent here in the Green Bay, Wisconsin area. And like I said in the opener, we have a special, special guest with us today. We're talking about 12 things that you're going to miss when you move away from Green Bay, Wisconsin. And if you're somebody watching this who hasn't moved to Green Bay, then these are kind of like things you're missing out on by not being in Green Bay. And some of these are broader Wisconsin level things, but they apply to Green Bay too. So don't be hard on Dylan uh, or me or anything like that. But uh, if you have things that you miss when you moved away from Green Bay or moved from Wisconsin or whatever, put them in the comment section below. Let's see how big of a list of things we can get. Well, that's kind of the intro there, guys. I wanted to let Dylan tell you a little bit about who this guy is and where he lives now and what he does for business, because there could be some mutual opportunity for you to connect with him and uh, help his business out as well. So, Dylan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Mm -hmm. How long were you in Green Bay? How much time did you have to fall in love with Green Bay? Yeah, absolutely. Well, happy to be here, first of all. Yeah. So I actually, I grew up in central Wisconsin, the Wassa area, and my whole life, Green Bay was that big city, right? It's the place <laughs> people wanted to go to. Uh, so I actually, I went to school in Green Bay for two years and then lived here for about three and a half years afterwards. So altogether, five, five and a half years. And really, the big monumental milestones in my life happened. I got married here. I had my first kid here. You met me here? I, that's true. Yeah, yeah, come on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I really fell in love with the city. Now I'm actually in Gilbert, Arizona. It's the southeast part of Phoenix working in financial services, um, did move for the work opportunity. I help people who have 25 bucks up to 25 million, everything in between. So if you got the cash, he could help you out managing that. There we go. He does a pretty good job from what I hear. And uh, <laughs> I trust him with some of my own finances, so. Some, you got more? Well, if you guys keep watching and subscribing, don't forget to do that. Maybe we can get some more there of that. There we go. <laughs> well, we're going to spend the day diving into these 12 things that Dylan and his wife, Alyssa, mm -hmm. you know, talked about when we, you know, got first got connected and talked through this idea and uh, just give you guys an idea of what you might miss. So let's jump into that. Um, these aren't in any kind of like priority no. order, are they? Okay. So don't, they're not weighted necessarily, but I know the first one is probably... <laughs> Probably it actually could be weighted. So let's jump into the 12 things that you might miss when you move away from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Break them down. We are going to go offset and check out a bunch of these for you. So you'll at least get some buttery B-roll video of some of these things. Mm. Hopefully to entice you to move to Green Bay or just remember the special things you have yeah. being in Green Bay. So Dylan, break it down for us. What are the things that they're going to miss if they move away from Green Bay, Wisconsin, from your experience? All right. Yeah, so like you mentioned, we do have a couple that aren't specific to Green Bay in particular, but rather broader Wisconsin culture. And if you've been following the channel at all, you probably can guess what this one is, and that's Quick Trip. <laughs> right. I wish I had my shirt on. <laughs> so... I try to explain this to people who don't live in the Midwest and they just, they can't understand it, right? No. Why do you like a gas station so much? Why do you talk about it all the time? <laughs> and you have to really experience it to understand, whether it's the Karuba Gold, 
the the fresh donuts all the time, mm -hmm. the for reals, the, the gas itself, you know, or just that warm feeling when you step into it. Mm -hmm. I know after we moved to Arizona, when we came back to visit the first time, I walked into Quick, Quick Trip and it seriously felt like going home on Christmas. Like Quick Trip missed me too. <laughs> they nailed their brand. Mm -hmm. They're, they have just entrenched themselves as a Wisconsin Midwestern like it's a staple. love affair. Yeah. <laughs> it's passionate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, another thing that goes along with that, which you can get at Quick Trip, is actually Spotted Cow, the new Glarus beer. Now, I didn't actually really appreciate it when I lived here, but in Arizona, every time I tell someone we're going to Wisconsin, <laughs> without fail, they ask me to bring back Spotted Cow. I didn't know. I honestly, and this is probably, I like lose Wisconsin points for that, <laughs> but like, I didn't know that it was only a Wisconsin thing. Mm -hmm. So I actually have a friend who used to live in Chicago, and he told me once a month, they would drive up to Wisconsin just to get a keg of Spotted Cow. <laughs> That's insane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another thing that really came to mind, especially for my wife, is actually Woodman's, the grocery store. Yeah, baby. Uh, again, that's something, it's not just in Green Bay, but I think it's only in Wisconsin. I have only seen them in Wisconsin. If you have seen a Woodman's outside of Wisconsin, you can mention it in the comments. We'll give them credit for that, mm -hmm. but it's Wisconsin from what I know. Yeah, and one of the particulars about it is just how big it is and how many yeah. things are in it. The, the original Woodman's is the largest grocery store in the country. I didn't know that either. This is why you bring Dylan on. He has these amazing facts. These little fun facts. My wife makes fun of me for yeah, them. Yeah. But you go into Woodman's, if you want something organic or natural, or if you want a vegetable you've never heard of, yep. it's going to be there. <laughs> Along with the whole, gosh, the whole liquor section is overwhelming almost. Yes. I call it the Woodman's Liquor Mall. There you go. I call it a liquor mall. And that's just the liquor section. That's not like the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I... I know this is hard to believe. I broke up with my now wife Oof. at one point in our relationship. That was a horrible decision. You know, you can bash me in the comments for that too. Uh, but I did get her back. Thank you, Alicia. I love you. But I remember going to Woodman's to go shopping with, you know, being kind of solo again in my life. I legit, and I'm going to be raw with you guys, I legit cried in the in the store because it was so massive and i felt so lonely <laughs> so if you are in the middle of a relationship separation try a smaller store like the red owl on the east side or on the west side of green bay or something like that because the massive woodman's crushed my soul oh at my that gosh. point but i love the store <laughs> well maybe something a little happier right <laughs> is the bar and yeah. it, it's called the bar Right, and uh, so many good memories there, especially they have their cheap wing night. What is it, like 50 cents a wing? I mean, it, yeah, it used to be, I want to say 30 at one point, not yeah. anymore. Oh, so I remember <laughs> so many times, whether it was my wife's birthday or just a group of college kids getting together, going there, being able to have that amazing quality wings, which in Arizona, I still haven't found wings as good as the bars. Yeah. Being able to go there, spend a couple of bucks, watch the Packer game. Oh, beautiful. And they have dedicated gluten-free yeah. fryers. So if you are someone who has dietary issues related to gluten, um, they can really accommodate you like super well. Both of our wives avoid gluten, mm -hmm. right? So uh, it's, it's something that, you know, they can really help you out that way if that was something you're looking for. And you still wanted a sports bar, which those two things don't mesh yeah. that often. <laughs> and the real kicker, you go there on your birthday and you drink for free. You get a nice little oh. <laughs> glow up button. So as far as something specific just to Green Bay, yeah. and I mean really just Green Bay, you're not going to get this anywhere else, and that's Lambeau Field. Not just Lambeau, but broader having an NFL team in a city of 100,000 people, it's right? It's not, you know, it won't happen ever again. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, where I live, Gilbert, it's the largest town in America, 250,000 people. And I tell people, imagine if Gilbert had an NFL team and they're, they just can't handle it, right? That's what it is here in Green Bay. Yep. But with that, you can see players at the grocery store or out at the bar, yep. right? There's 1919 Kitchen and Tap, 
which is an, a restaurant inside of Lambo. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Gone there for mm -hmm. a few birthdays. Mm -hmm. The Packers Pro Shop, Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. all these. If you like history, you can spend a lot of time there. Yep. The yep. what is it now? The the Title Town District. Yep. Right. Yep. And I'm sure you've shared some things about what's going on there. Yeah. There's a lot of sweet things going on there. Uh, Awesome things for your kids to do. Um, they have all sorts of events that are uh, at, throughout the year. You can ice skate on this like course almost mm -hmm. in the winter. Tubing. Uh, spoiler, not a spoiler. This is like a little tease for you. Actually, I am going to be doing a video Ooh. showing you the inside of the new houses, the new yeah, the new condo. Oh, wow. I don't know townhouse condo development that they are building there. I get to have special access to show you guys around that coming up here. And don't even forget, probably the best kept tradition in the NFL is the Packers fence. Yeah. There, across the street from Lambeau Field is a residential, and there are rows of fences where they'll hire professional artists and paint entire murals related to the NFL season. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually on the local news. Right when they unveil the new pictures, <laughs> that's that's so small town. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best part of Green Bay is the small town, but you do get some, you know, variety to life. So mm -hmm. we only need one football team, though. <laughs> Green Bay Blizzard, we like you too, but yeah. <laughs> it's not Lambo. <laughs> one thing that any small town is going to appreciate is a restaurant like Julie's Cafe. Yeah. I I told him when we first got into town this year. We stopped at Julie's right away. I opened the menu. Everything was seriously $4 less than what I was used to pay. Uh-huh. Right? But, you know, it's not just the price of the food, but the quality. It actually has that home-cooked uh, meal and quality and atmosphere with it. And the one in Howard has this awesome view on a pond with ducks yeah. and swans. And if you have kids, you can just sit them in the high chair facing the window They'll shut up for a whole hour just watching all the ducks That's go around. That's like a date night without paying for the babysitter. Basically. The ducks are the babysitter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's a few Julies around Green Bay. They're all mm -hmm. high quality. We actually used to go to one, I think, like every week. Try to. Right, with a group of guys in the morning, talk about life and everything. Mm -hmm. And Julie's was the perfect place for that. I was there this week, so. Oh, okay. Still happens. Just yeah. wasn't with Dylan. Ouch. I love you still. <laughs> you know, another thing that really sticks out is Bay Beach Amusement Park. Yeah. And you might think, okay, there's lots of amusement parks. Bay Beach has that perfect blend of, of small kid appeal, affordability, and fun for the adults still. Yes. Not yes. to mention, there's a touch of history, right? On every ride and even in the buildings, they've got when this ride was invented, mm -hmm. where it came from, when it was brought to Green Bay. Things like the Zip and Pippin, which are, I think it's having its anniversary. It might be. It's an, it's an incredible like incredible thing to have in green bay yeah fun fact elvis actually visited the zip and pippin once and rented it out for the whole day just so he could ride it and if you don't know the zip and pippin is actually a full wooden yeah. roller coaster right in green bay yeah green bay has its own roller coaster <laughs> and you can ride it for like what a dollar basically yeah it's insane tickets are a quarter each and the kids rides they're all one ticket so they're 25 cents the bigger rides like the Zip and Pippin are four tickets, so it's a dollar. Oh darn! <laughs> and if your <laughs> if your kids get sick of the rides for whatever reason, they have a full park. I know there's a move to restore an actual beach at yes. Bay Beach. Yep. Uh, I have memories of that when I was four. You know, we'd take a day trip over here, ride on the rides, and then go chill on the beach for a little while. Yeah. Hopefully, they'll bring that back. One gem that I don't think people appreciate enough is at the campus UWGB. It's surrounded by an entire, what would you call, woodland area? Yeah, I mean, the fancy word is arboretum, but it's like basically wooded trails. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a nature preserve, right? Yeah. I've actually, I've hit a deer on the Green Bay campus <laughs> because the arboretum is so well preserved. Yeah. It's, it's the perfect place for a date. Actually, that was where my wife and I had our first date. We went walking Aww. around the trails. Right, so it has a special place in my heart. But like I said, it's removed from the city, surrounding the campus. So if you just want to unplug for a little bit, go see some deer, whatever mm -hmm. you want to do, pick fiddleheads, mm -hmm. it's all right there. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact mileage. I want to say at least five, if not more, miles of trails out there. You can look it up, I believe, on the UW Green Bay website to get more information. We'll put the link for that. We'll put the link for a lot of these things, actually. Um, 
in the dis in the description below. Yeah. You know, one thing that just started to really become popular when I was still living here, and now it's really taken off, is the city deck. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, a pretty unique thing because not many cities have a river literally cutting it in half. Yep. And I can think of what the Cuyahoga in Ohio, San Antonio, Texas, sure has a river. Sure. So that's not something you can come across very often. Mm -hmm. But the city deck was really put in to be like the hub of downtown life. You know, from there you can bike, you can boat, you can go into all these different unique restaurants or the Flats and the Fox. Yep. They do events right on the deck. Mm -hmm. So I've seen, I've been driving over a bridge and you see like a hundred people doing yoga <laughs> yeah. just out there. Or they bring in some live music. You even have protests and demonstrations mm -hmm. on the city deck. It really is becoming integrated into the fabric of the city. Yeah. Which makes sense because it's right there. Everyone can get to it. Mm -hmm. And I think we're actually going to go visit it today. Oh right? yeah. We're going to go check it out. If you live in any city of, you know, a good size, you probably have a local farmer's market, but I'm pretty confident it's not like the one in Green Bay. There's not a lot like it. No. <laughs> and, you know, I live in Gilbert, right? So there's, there's still farms around and we have a pretty nice farmer's market. It's not really food though. Hmm. Most of the things at the farmer's market are going to be like boutique shops where you can buy crafts that people made and they'll have food trucks, but very few actual farmers with their food, uh -huh. Uh -huh. right? So I go to the Green Bay Farmer's Market. I can get bison. I can get sheepskin. I can talk to the actual farmers, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not just high quality stuff, but they literally take over an entire downtown street mm -hmm. every week. Yeah. I mean, there's two of them, one on Saturday and one on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. They operate, I think, a little differently, but same idea and same, same quality of people. Yeah. And uh, I think a real benefit of it is they actually do accept EBT tokens. Yep. So if you do want to get some high quality food and you have a little limited options, mm -hmm. that's always a great place mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you run into that idea of these like food deserts in mm -hmm. the middle of cities because of the uh, lack of access to fresh food. And this, I mean, these are both located downtown right on like right next to the river. And uh, to be able to access fresh food and all of that kind of thing with that government subsidy is a huge blessing for somebody um, to get what they need and have a healthy life. Mm -hmm. Plus, if you want to, this might sound really Wisconsin, if you want to buy <laughs> like a quarter cow or a half cow, yeah. you can negotiate right there with the farmers and lock in your rate, which for a lot of people, that sounds crazy. <laughs> did you do that? We did, actually. We got a quarter cow with my father-in-law. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Any list of things in Green Bay that you'll miss wouldn't be yeah. complete without talking about the cost of living. Yep. <laughs> we, you know, the housing market is bananas right now. We just closed on our refi and our property value went up 90 grand in eight months. Okay, God. so <laughs> it's, it, the cost of living is very, very different where I'm from or where I live right now versus in Green Bay. And I was looking around, driving through different neighborhoods. It's not just that the houses are so affordable, but there's such a big, variety yes you can go to the aster district which is a lot of the more historical mm -hmm. homes mm -hmm. and i mean they are very very impressive gorgeous you can go to things like navarino which mm -hmm. i think you have spent we did some a neighborhood time video there yeah navarino and have uh, different kinds of houses you can go swamico howard down to De Pier for more of that uh city kind of feel with your homes mm -hmm. just a lot of variety all at a very affordable price mm -hmm. not just houses everything <laughs> <laughs> You heard about his, uh, his food experience with Julie's oh already. So, I mean, it's all, it all ties into the economics of what you're getting paid and where you live and sure. whatnot. But when someone from out of town or who moves away goes to the, where they are or comes here from where they are, you can see the difference. Oh, my so, gosh, yeah. And that's one reason why I also have investors calling me to buy property here with their money from say the west coast or mm -hmm. i mean east coast or arizona or wherever where these property values are just nuclear it's really hot here too don't be, pretend if you want to sell your house here you're going to make a lot of money um most likely you know be careful but use you know use a, a real estate agent who's right. really good like me uh but anyway yeah just like you can bring your money here and it'll go a lot farther no matter what it is you're trying to buy <laughs> right we, half a cow is that half a cow you could do that <laughs> 
The last thing, and I, I couldn't finish this list without mentioning it, is actually the people Aww. in Green Bay, right? Aww. I think Andrew has talked about it before that a lot of the charm and appeal of Green Bay is that tight-knit community yep. where it's people you can actually know and you can go through different stages of life with. Mm -hmm. And even if they're from out of town and bring a different experience, once everyone's integrated, it just becomes almost like a big family, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. hard to find that, especially in a bigger city. Gilbert, where I live, is a it's a little bit like that. We actually tell people Gilbert's kind of like a bigger Green Bay. Nice. Right? But the people who live around Gilbert don't have that, and they want that. So that's something that Green Bay offers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, at an affordable price. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, you can run into people, just like with the Packer players, you run into friends mm -hmm. and uh, see them out and about in the town, yet you still have that opportunity to have maybe more than one option of things, whereas maybe a smaller town where you really have that tight-knit feel, you're like lacking in some things. Right. This is almost a, a marriage of both. So That's a good way to describe it. Where I grew up in Wausau, Green Bay felt like the big city. But you go into any other metropolitan area, and Green Bay is a little town. <laughs> yeah, the big city, like Chicago, Milwaukee, you know, going out to L.A. or whatever, they're like, oh, I'd love to come check out your sweet little town. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, big city-ish with really awesome relationships and good friends. <laughs> so, there you go. Well, that's 12 things that you will miss if you move away from Green Bay, Wisconsin. I want to say thank you again to Dylan and Alyssa for coming along on this adventure and teaching us some things from their pain, pain and loss. Yeah, you could call it that. They have good things, too, in their life, and, you know, that's great, too. And if you want to move to Arizona, awesome. Let me know. I'll connect you. No, we you. don't need anyone else. Oh, they don't want anyone there, <laughs> so never mind. But if you do anyway, <laughs> let me know, and I'll connect you with an agent in Arizona so you can get a place down there. But you heard you're going to pay more, mm -hmm. so be ready for that. Um, you know, we got things coming up, so make sure to like and subscribe. Like this video if it gave you value, which I sure hope it did because Dylan's pretty awesome, and I think it will. Give us that thumbs up, and uh, also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We have more cool stuff on the way, so you're going to want to be subscribed so you don't miss any of it. Hit that little bell to get notifications, too, if you haven't already because life is busy and you need things to remind you. <laughs> so I know I do. But that, you know, that wraps up the video. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any real estate needs, make sure to hit me up. My information is in the description below as well. And we will talk to you guys again on another video of Living in Green Bay soon.